Hi, one of the most talked and symbolic icons of nanotechnology is carbon nanotube. And there are some reasons behind the extensive amount of attention to carbon nanotubes. If you remember, we have classified nanotubes as the one-dimensional nanostructures and carbon nanotubes is one of the famous allotropes of carbon, actually. I'm sure you already have heard about carbon nanotubes and of course discussion or research being done about uh, carbon nanotube based features and systems to be used in a variety of applications, even that crazy space elevator made by carbon nanotubes. If you are curious to discover more about carbon nanotubes, in this lecture I'm going to talk about carbon nanotubes, about their structure, what makes them so attracting, about their unique properties and of course some of the exciting applications to be fulfilled by carbon nanotubes. I'm Milad, your instructor from Bright Vision Academy. Bear with me. Definition and structure. Carbon nanotubes are tubes or let's say cylinders made of carbon atoms with diameters typically measured in nanometers. Although not made this way, but we can imagine carbon nanotubes could be formed from graphene sheets. As we saw in the previous lecture, graphene is one atom layer sheet of carbon atoms bonded in hexagonal network. And if we cut through that sheet, we get graphene on ribbons. And if you roll up that ribbons throughout the length, basically what you are making is a carbon nanotube. Although carbo carbon nanotubes are not made this way in practice, but uh, that's a nice picture to have in mind actually. One of the first things that comes in mind about making carbon nanotubes from graphene is the cutting orientation because depending on the cut orientation, different forms of carbon nanotubes are obtained. Let's make it more clear by this picture. If I cut graphene in this direction and then roll it up from the other side, my carbon nanotube gonna have zigzag edge and because of that this form of carbon nanotubes are called zigzag carbon nanotube. If I cut graphene through this direction and roll it up through another vertical direction, what is concluded is so-called armchair carbon nanotubes regarding the edge of the two. And also there is another possibility which results in neither zigzag nor armchair and uh, those kind of carbon nanotubes are named chiral carbon nanotubes. Furthermore, there are a couple of options and also carbon nanotubes could be larger or smaller depending on how much wide we cut through the graphene. All in all, there are a couple of options and we need to think about a naming method to keep carbon nanotubes recognizable. It actually is done through defining the roll-up vector of lattice CK which is equal to NA1 plus MA2. A1 and A2 are so-called lattice vectors and N and M show how many times these vectors are repeated through, you know, for a specific carbon nanotube. Well, how is it working? A1, as shown here, is a vector representing moving one step through this zigzag line of graphene sheet and N shows how many times these a1 vector is repeated by our cut for that from the sheet. About another lattice vector A2, A2 is defined with respect to A1 representing oriental zigzag movement like this and M shows how many times this one is repeated. So for example if I want to make a zigzag carbon nanotube I cut graphene by this vector and roll it up by the other side right in this case, I have repeated vector A1 10 times and no repeat of vector A2. Here the notation in parentheses is going to be like 10 zeros. Under this notation system, zigzag carbon nanotubes have always M equal to zero and N should have some value. Regarding armchair carbon nanotubes, N and M are always equal like here. We have moved seven times by A1 and seven times by A2 and thereby we get 77 armchair carbon nanotube. And when N is not equal to M, we are talking about a chiral carbon nanotube. All right, sweet. Now we know about different structures of carbon nanotubes and their notation system. Considerably, in terms of conductivity, not all of carbon nanotubes contain the same characteristics. Some represent metallic behavior, while some others are semiconductors. Why is that so? 
Well, it comes back to what we discussed about the shape size dependent properties of nanostructures in the section two. Each edge shape enforces different quantum confinement in carbon nanotubes leading to different conducting behavior. In general, for a given N and M nanotube, if N is equal to M, the nanotube is metallic. If N minus M is a multiple of three and N and M are not equal or neither of them are zero, then the nanotube is quasi-metallic with a very small band gap. Otherwise, the nanotube is a moderate semiconductor. When we say carbon nanotubes, it usually refers to single wall carbon nanotubes. But as a matter of the fact, they could be multi-walled carbon nanotubes. Multi-walled carbon nanotubes are consist of, of several interlinked nanotubes with diameter reaching more than 100 nanometers. Uh, their lengths can reach several micrometers or even millimeters compared to single wall carbon nanotubes. Uh, the multi-wall carbon nanotubes are always metallic. One interesting property found in single wall carbon nanotubes is electric conductance within them is ballistic. Ballistic transport means that all electrons that go into one end of the conductor comes out of the other end almost without a scattering at the medium. In other words, carbon nanotubes would be considered as the zero resistance conductors or let's say superconductors. And actually, and actually there are research to see whether carbon nanotubes could work as the superconductors near the room temperature or not, because there are some now superconductors working at the very low temperatures, but no material in the room temperature. To, to date actually. So if carbon nanotubes could work as the superconductors at the room temperature, they would carry current with no resistance, with no energy lost as the heat. And that means a lot in electronic devices because heat is the enemy of the electronic devices performance and engineers do a lot to get rid of the heat. Such carbon nanotube based electronic devices would work faster with much higher battery life actually. Okay, let's see how is the performance of carbon nanotubes in other terms than electronic property. Regarding chemical bonding like graphene, in carbon nanotubes atoms are chemically bonded with sp2 bonds. And that's an extremely strong form of molecular interaction. This bonding structure is even stronger than sp3 bonds found in diamond and it makes them uniquely strong. In fact, the mechanical tensile strength of carbon nanotubes is going to be like 400 times stronger than steel. And they are very lightweight though. Their density is one thing of that of steel, although they are like 400 times stronger than steel. Because of their mechanical properties, carbon nanotubes are very interesting as a filler in polymers and in organic composites. Carbon nanotubes are already used in some consumer products to add strength without, uh, you know, comprising weight, such as uh, uh, tennis rackets. Thermal conductivity of the carbon nanotubes is better than that of the diamond. In terms of the thermal properties, carbon nanotubes dissipate heat better than any other non-material and they are excellent thermal conductors. They have a very high aspect ratio greater than 1000 in a relation to their uh, lengths. They are extremely thin. A tip surface area, the carbon nanotubes have a tip surface area near the theoretical limit. The smaller the tip surface area, the more concentrated the electric field and the greater the field enhancement factor is achieved actually. These features make them very ideal to be used as a tip for a scanning probe uh, microscopes where extremely thin sensitive tip is required to map the surface of material at the atomic scale. Just like graphite, carbon nanotubes are highly chemically stable and resist virtually any chemical impact unless they are uh, simultaneously exposed to high temperature and oxygen, a property that makes them extremely resistant to corrosion. Their hollow interior can be filled with various nanomaterials, separating and shielding those materials from the surrounding environment. That's going to be a property that is, that is uh, extremely useful for nanomedicine applications like uh, drug delivery. Perfect, such an amazing material, huh? And now we understand why carbon nanotubes have a finger in every cutting edge research pie. Cool. Let's talk about some issues and challenges regarding the carbon nanotubes and finish this lecture. 
In terms of fabrication, scientists have now developed methods to control the synthesis of carbon nanotubes to obtain regular structures with specific properties, but still it's uh, not an easy job to do. Like uh, they can make carbon nanotubes at the order of millimeters at the max, but oftentimes the carbon nanotubes are not totally pure. In fact, there are some serious issues in terms of widely using carbon nanotubes in practice. Challenges like precise fabrication, mass production integration at high volume, besides the concerns that has been associated with toxicity issues of carbon nanotubes in terms of the cost production of the carbon nanotubes is extremely high and in the future this cost must be considerably reduced to allow a large scale production and use of carbon nanotubes. Thanks for watching. See you in the next lecture.